I've shared before about my work in releasing unforgiveness, which seems like a weird way to say that, but it's, it's a gentle, for me, it's a gentler way to say it because saying to forgive someone who did something so painfully aggressive against another, that might be that just that languaging softening a little like, bit. By, yeah. 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 Say, Sorry. Say it. Feels like work. It just, Oh, now I got to do that too. Now I got to forgive yeah. them. I got to do all this work yeah. when I'm not the one I'm, yeah, I'm the victim here. Yeah. It's yeah. not like that. And releasing unforgiveness to me just feels like I no longer have a burden. I'm putting down a burden. It really has nothing to do with the other person. And so for when I was in that work, I really, I believed that it was in my best interest, my highest good to release unforgiveness for the person who sexually abused me as a child. And you know, the, whew, the injury mm. of, of that kind of, that kind of, aggression, you know, that yeah. that's hard because I, 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 now I, you know, you can look at the child and you, you protect the child that you no longer are even. And you think, you know, you can just go crazy with it. And I felt the pain in my, my body still I felt the pain in my field. If I thought about even trying to do that work. And so I, I was so frustrated because I, I thought, well, do I have to get a lobotomy that I forget the actual incidents? And so I was driving along and I, pulled over my car because I got, I was so frustrated and I banged on the steering wheel with my frustration, which I think was probably also uh, subconsciously, I was doing some tapping, you know, EFT, it, you know, it banged on the steering wheel and I called out to the angels and I said, I don't know how to do this, but I am declaring that I am willing to do it. I'm willing to understand, I don't know. So I, I'm giving up. And that was it. That was a surrender. And I no longer had to do the work. Now I remember it. It's like a story that I heard or a movie that I saw and I don't have resonance with it anymore. This is so. so powerful. This is so powerful. And we talked about this in the intensive. We are in the Lightworkers Lab. For those of you who are struggling with these wounds, this unforgiveness, people who have hurt you, you just think about them for a second and you start getting angry again or you start getting yeah. anxious again or Sick. you start getting yeah. grief again. That means you have an active wound of unforgiveness. And let me tell you, that wound is an energy. It's got mm -hmm. a structure. It's got a grid. It's got a pattern. It's taking up space in your mind, body, and spirit. And the longer that it dwells within you, the longer you don't have the space for spirit to come in and truly change your life. We have to deal with the unforgiveness. But this is the good news of what Trisha really just said. She didn't have to do the work of figuring out how to forgive it. And I saw, I saw you catch yourself... Uh, from saying, or even how to understand how to forgive. Like, I don't even know how to, un I don't even need yeah. to know how to understand how to forgive. The mechanics of that are not my business because forgiveness is divine. It comes mm. from source. It's really about just being willing. Yes, I acknowledge I am carrying around this wound and I'm carrying around this pain and I still get so upset and I acknowledge that this is a wound and I'm offering it on the altar. I'm offering it to you, spirit. I am willing to forgive. I don't know how. I, don't know what I have means. no idea how to do this, yeah. but I know that you do spirit and I'm offering it to you and I'm willing to let it go because sometimes we're so habituated to our shadow and we are so habituated to our wounds that we don't know how to live without them and we are patterned by, excuse me, we are puppeted by the pattern of them, meaning mm -hmm. we behave, we conduct ourselves in alignment with the patterns that are puppeting us. So we really don't know who we are outside of our wounds and our pain. But the challenge is to truly let it go because when we let it go and we let the light in, this light is the light that transforms us that transmutes us, that up-levels us, that cracks us open truly, I say to you, and allows our consciousness to expand, like to make those connections. Seat. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You want to make those spiritual connections. You want to be psychic. You want to be intuitive. You want to see angels. Well, you've got to deal with your crap first. You've got to put it up on the altar because there's too much space being taken up by these wounds. But that's, again, that's the good news. You don't have to work at it. You just have to be willing. That's it. And one year later, she's looking back and she's realizing, hey, you know what? I'm not triggered anymore. I didn't. Yeah, it's just gone. Poof. Nothing not, happened. I didn't do a special thing. I didn't, you know. Spend a year in therapy. I didn't get a very expensive crystal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, but, you know. <laughs> not because of that. Yeah. But it just happened, right? It just happened. It was just gone. And I think it was just gone in that moment of surrender. And so here's the thing. Spirit's just telling me, <clears throat> as Crystal was uh, talking, as Crystal was preaching, 
is that that patterning that we're doing, it's primal. And the reason that it's in place, the, the, the good thing that, is, that it is intending to do, that it's the, child, the child's thought beneath it is that it wants to remember it. And it does it by, by way of creating a pattern of continuing to think about it, continuing to feel about it, so that it won't happen again. The belief underneath it is that this holding of unforgiveness is going to keep us safe. And so if you can come, come now, let us reason together. If you can see, oh, I'm no longer under threat as a, a, a child who, you know, can be harmed by a person. Oh, I'm no longer, I, I no longer need the approval of a bishop about my sexuality. I don't need that anymore. And actually, if I care about those instances, then me healed from the, the way that I came through it is going to equip me to help others or to vibrate it, the, the truth and the higher learning about it. So what's so beautiful about it is that this primal patterning, when you, it turns you to the, the, the strength of yourself. It turns you to your I am. It turns you to say, oh, I am the strength in this. And I no longer need the patterning of the thinking and the feeling about that. The boogeyman doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And I can be the one who knows that I am the strength in this. Mm -hmm. Start praise dancing. Start mm -hmm. praise dancing. <laughs> Start hopping around. Ecstatic, ecstatic yeah. dancing, body praying. Yeah.